sorry there, but uh, I guess we're ready. So, uh, um, before we stop doing some exercises and take, utilizing the tool to explore the things we can in production and overview of, uh, of the tool, um, remote sensing toolbox. What is it? Um, I guess most know already it's, it's an R um, uh, toolbox that works with um, the plus um, sort of, uh, if you have any version from that, it's written, it's sort of in, written in Python. So and it's, there's separate tools in there that, that we sort of have um, that will help facilitate work analyzing the, the, the data products that we've provided. Um, Sort of the installation process already. Um, did everybody basically got it? I mean, it's so it's like you just call into a directory basically that you can access from your from your RTIS session. So we'll um, see. We've all got that. Yeah. One thing when you do add add the toolbox um, tool, toolbox to RTIS toolbox. That that unless you that will be saved when you save an MXD file. But if you if you um, open a new session of Spark Maps, that toolbox won't be in there. It's basically going to be associated. That customization is going to be associated with that MXD file. So just keep that in mind. So this will get the first uh, tool for uh, Clear Time Series uh, composites. And uh, its purpose is basically to sort the data from the grain to be monthly or a time, time interval or, um, into, into um, a single composite. And uh, you might just potentially, if you're doing climatology, just looking sort of for trends or um, creating sort of uh, in this like a, a um, spatial, it's very sort of what's created using this tool. To sort of take all that data from, from many different daily images or and combine those into sort of a solid information and get rid of sort of some of the noise that you might say. Um, this is a graph just sort of um, event sort of sort of picture of what's going on. Um, if we're in, in this example we do a monthly composite and um, images three hundred images daily images for one for one and we're composing into twelve twelve image twelve images. Mm -hmm. That's right. And just a little bit of sort of some of the common sort of functionality within I don't I, I, I most of you that are sort of familiar with Rhino Arc from the, the system tools the dark map. Um, so it's that we we provide you know, within the sort of show help and get sort of context sensitive help for each of the, the and the fields within the parameters that you need to enter. So we have the same um, functionality. If you click the, uh, the show help option here, it'll open the show and which and this is going to show um, so the tool, the functionality of the tool and goes through each of the Fields here that um, information will update and give you the information specific to that. Uh, and you can, if you want to get rid of it, hide the tool, hide the, hide the help. Um, selecting what you want to process, uh, there's sort of the standard sort of input for, for each of the tools, and you're sort of giving it three pieces of information, identifying the folder that, that contains the raster files that you're looking to process, and um, then by a, a an input file filter, which uh, is essentially, and you can provide wildcards as the asterisk is sort of used to say it's going to be one or more, any character basically, or one or more characters. It's going to just like compare. So if we were to um, product direct the, uh, the, date, we, the data, if you've got the, <coughs> in the daily images, you'll have the CI products, you'll have the CI, the anno, and the non anno. So if you just wanted to say, using um, the CI, you would 
apply a, fil a, a filter to, of just dot C dot tip, which is and that's nice that work. Uh, we're going to be running a whole CI product. Uh, if, if you then divide the data into subdirectories below that, that you can recursively um, find files that matching the search criteria by using this sort of the recursive search. you have for a single band, so you don't really have to worry about it. You have some data at our office, but it can be 30 panels or something like that, so there. So, yeah, thank you. Right. So, the data, um, you're just going to want to go with the sort of the standard um, defaults here.
flex points around. So if you had a sample, it's going to pick the exact pixel that falls in that sample point. Plus or minus the pixel if you wanted to. We're not doing that. Right. Okay. in the mapping so there you know the, that's the, that's, there, yeah. but but you I mean your point is, goes back to Rick's um, slide of it yesterday I think with the stadium sort of and you're just mapping one tiny little lo location so you know um, it's an average of everything in a 300 by 300 meters Are you going to get 
set of um, columns here with a date, which is the value that's extracted from the file name of the, um, of the product, the expectation, and then the value, value that you've, you've extracted of, of that valuation, um, the pot from the raster, and then you can option as Shelley was sort of mentioning there, you have the ability to sort of select um, attributes uh, in your plate file that you can optionally include um, with the file for each point. Um, in this case, this is sort of a map. So here's the, we extracted also the sampling value from, from that shape file and, and the sampling location, the name of the location. So you have the option to define those. On these sort of these last two columns here, you have sort of it's up to you to click on your your individual files for the pending. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Do you have a water bottle that's being covered by three percent versus? Could you have it enter all three so you can see what kind of play with the uh, ratio? With the pixels within a whole water bottle? Yeah. We'll get to that. Another tool to do that. Those three locations, yes. If you have for three locations, you could do it as a point, but you could also do it as a polygon. So, like a bigger lake, you want to extend pixels in that lake and then do some sort of averaging or whatever. That's a separate tool. So, yeah. And the no matchup versus matchup. So, like the no matchup is you've just got locations and you want to pull in time all the pixels in time for that the, that station. You're just pulling all of them. That's what the first one is. And the other is date and spatial matchups is to make a difference. Go through the exercises at all sort of might make more sense, yeah. But when you use which option. The second tool for extracting pixel values is it's um extract by polygon. So um, you can just imagine what, what this is gonna do is extracting all of the valid data pixels from a um, once again, uh, uh, polygon type, um, so and it will operate on selected features if you only if you have a vanilla shape file with only one selected or more, it will only operate on that polygon. So um, and if you're wanting to pull extract pull it into some sort of other software for further analysis. Very similar to the last, um, that's just operating at the call level. So if you're going to get a um, polygon selected, it's going to extract every single polygon, um, every single pixel from within this defined region and in the CSV file for, for every um, within that. No data pixels are going to show up as an empty string or So you could, if you have a large polygon or a lot of polygons, you get a lot of data from from uh, tools. So you know, um, well, is there a thing you could see a raster where it all is in the uh, index uh, of your know, polygon extraction box? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's any any any, any polygon. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, so this tool is going to give you the, the X and Y are going to be based on the projection and data of raster. We're doing it at the, the point level. I guess they were just working that. So if you, at the point level, you're starting by the point, it's going to actually give you the, the X based on the projection and data of the shape file. So it's a little different. But output 
So the final tool in this is, is sort of a utility function that allows us to, to basically convert data out of range to no data values for um, those specific applications that um, I just talked about previously for the rest. If the system five times would need to run it if you were going to run that tool on the daily in your input is the image product. And, and if you're doing the pixel extraction by point, on the image product again, and they're, they're typically by default, it's, it, it's going to take the for each, each um, habit, it's going to just take the, the on the, the cell that it falls in. Essentially, you know, they, those cells are 300 by 300 meters, so it's going to take the, the value is at the, at the cell it falls, and you have the option to select and inter interpolate those values by using the sort of surrounding. And that to get a uh, slightly different value, you know, by learning interpolation of the surrounding cell. If you choose that interpolation option, you need to show those inputs before, before running um, the select extraction by point. So that's what I was talking about, the three by three box or, or five by three, whatever. No? Um, yeah, you need to, need to buffer those out for that. Gotcha. And Your daily slide coming in, and then you're going to have the, um, the mask back to the other screen. This and essentially it's, it's just showing the points from that penny image. And that's pretty much, um, pretty much it. It's just providing uh, sort of the, uh, the color bar and the, the pixel values as they correspond to the color bar. So that hopefully gives you an uh, Now we're going to spend some exercises, and you can actually uh, go and test out and uh, follow version so version one. So if you have any um, issues, questions too. Yeah. yeah, hopefully it runs smoothly, but you know it's uh, version one, so there's always potential for yeah. problems. But And then to where oh, I really wish I could do this and wish someone was able to do that, let us know. You know, we took a guess based on the data on what you might want to do with it. But um there may be Yeah. Program is Python, so just you have the option to go in there and add the code. So, yeah, yes,